Okay, so uh, the topic for this week in our support class is actually kind of a short one. Um, in our parent class, we're starting chapter four, the last chapter in our book this week. Uh, the topic there is integration and uh, specifically dealing with antiderivatives in section 4.1. Um, the necessary kind of prerequisite material for that section is really just understanding derivatives. And since we've already practiced derivatives a lot, even in the support class, um, I'm, I'm instead going to focus on one other uh, little skill that you kind of need for that section. So uh, I'm going to explain that here. I'm calling this solving for C. Um, as you're going to see in section 4.1, we're going to end up with a lot of functions that are in this form. f of x equals some function of x, or whatever the variable happens to be, and then you're going to see a plus c showing up. In the parent class, we're going to call that the constant of integration, and we'll explain where it comes from there. Um, a lot of the time, <clears throat> we're leaving that just in the form of plus c, but sometimes we're trying to solve for that c. It's always going to represent a constant, and so we're trying to figure out what that constant is. As we'll explain in the parent class, if you're going to solve for that c, you need additional information about the function. So if you notice here, we have f of x equals 4x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 10x squared minus x plus 9 plus c. And then we also know that f of negative 1 is equal to 15. So <clears throat> this is oftentimes called an initial condition, and it can be used to find this unknown constant right here. And here's how it works. If f of negative 1 equals 15, that means I can plug negative 1 into this function and set it equal to 15. So I'm going to set this side equal to 15. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to show that I'm plugging negative 1 into all of the x's here. So 4 times negative 1 to the 4th minus 3 times negative 1 cubed plus 10 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1. Put parentheses around that one so the minus signs aren't like minus minus. Uh, plus 9. And then nothing has happened to the c. There's no x's there. But if you notice... All of the variables I've plugged a value into, and now the only unknown that's left in this equation is that c, so I can solve for it. Um, this is going to be equal to 4. This is going to be equal to 3. So let me write this in a couple of steps. That's 4. Negative 3, this becomes negative 1 when I cube it. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Negative 1 squared is 1. Time, uh, times 10 would be plus 10. Minus negative 1 is going to give me a plus 1, and then I have a plus 9 plus c, okay? Um, so let's add these up. This, this is 10 plus 10 plus 7, so 27. 15 equals 27 plus c. I can subtract 27 from both sides, and from that I'm going to see that c is equal to uh, negative 12, okay? So I have solved for c. <clears throat> nothing fancy about this. It's a very straightforward process, but we do it a lot in 4.1, so it's worth kind of practicing this here. Um, kind of getting used to seeing functions with that plus C in there and then seeing something like this and knowing what to do with it. I want to look at a couple more examples. Um, it's a little bit sloppy in here because I almost forgot to write plus C, but that's a plus C right there. So this one says f of x is equal to the natural log of x squared plus 1 plus 6e to the x plus c. And then we have this initial condition, f of 0 is equal to 1. So same thing. I'm going to plug 0 into my function, set it equal to 1, and then use that to solve for c. So I'm going to put the 1 here. Natural log of 0 squared plus 1 plus 6e to the power of 0 plus c. Okay, so now I'm going to have 1 equals, this is the natural log of 1, which is 0. e to the power of 0 is 1 times 6, would just be 6, so I have 0 plus 6, which is just 6 plus c. Now I can subtract 6 from both sides, and that gives me negative 5. Okay, done. Super easy, right? One last example. <clears throat> Nothing really fancy about this one either. It's just a different type of function, but we're doing the same thing to it. So 
f of x is equal to 7x squared minus x to the 3 halves power over the quantity x minus 1 cubed. So I have this big rational looking expression over here, plus c over here. And then I also know that f of 4 is equal to 11. So I'm going to plug a 4 into all of the x's and then set that equal to an 11 on this side. So 11 equals 7 times 4 squared minus 4 to the 3 halves power over 4 minus 1 cubed plus c. Okay, next step. 4 squared is 16, and 16 times 7 is 112 minus. Uh, here I've got 4 to the 3 halves power. So remember, this is the square root of 4, and then I take that and cube it. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is 8. So that becomes 112 minus 8. Down here, 4 minus 1 is 3, so I'm cubing that, plus c there. 11 is equal to, okay, on this side, 112 minus 8 is 104. 3 cubed is 27, plus c. Okay, now uh, I want to get a common denominator here, so 11 times 27 is 297, so this is going to look like 297 twenty sevenths equal 104 twenty sevenths plus c, and now I can just subtract the 104 twenty sevenths from both sides. Since I have that common denominator, I'll be able to find c pretty easily now. It's just 193 over 27. Occasionally, you get answers that are kind of nasty fractions, and that's nothing to be afraid of. It's just, that's life. Life comes out this way a lot. So, again, really short one this week. There's not really much else that we need to be studying and need to be prepping for for section 4.1. As far as prerequisite material goes, this is basically it. So, that's it.